Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be trying to understand the ligand substitution reaction in square planar complexes, uh, in which we'll be trying to understand the mechanism through which how the lig uh, ligand substitution reaction takes place in square planar complex. In our last video, what we have learned is the uh, ligand substitution reaction in octahedral complexes, where we have understood how it approach, how the mechanism actually can be understood. Uh, there are two mechanisms for the octahedral complexes, which we call as associative and dissociative mechanism. So that is what we have done in our part one. So in our part two, we'll be trying to take for the square planar complex. So the study of square planar complex has been mostly done in platinum two complexes, as it was found out that the substitution in square planar complexes is uh, slow, okay, as a result of which the study becomes easier and it takes place through the SN2 reaction, okay, and as a result of which uh, the uh, ligand, which is supposed to replace, get either replaced by a solvent in some of the cases or by directly by the entering ligand as the nucleophilic agent. So let us try to take both the cases and understand it, how it approaches through SN2 mechanism. So there are experimental evidences for SN2 mechanism, okay? And it was found out that because of some steric and electronic reason, the coordination number of the metal is usually increased, okay? And uh, the coordination number, which is usually obviously in square planar complexes is four, is increased to five, okay? And that attack of the ligand, which makes it from coordination number four to five, usually actually takes place from either above the plane or below the plane of the square planar geometry. And that attack is possible in platinum two complexes because of the presence of vacant PZ orbital of relatively low energy in platinum two, which accept the electron pair from the incoming ligand. For displacement reaction of square planar complexes in water, Okay, if we take a solvent, then it was found out that there was there is slight complication because water can act or the solvent can act as a potential ligand. Okay, so obviously the solvent, if you take as a water, it is a ligand. It acts as a potential ligand. So if I take a reaction of this type, like platinum complex, where X is the leaving group, will be replaced by Y in presence of water that is solvent to give you P, P, A, 3, Y, and X, okay, as the leaving group. It was found out when we uh, study the kinetics of this particular reaction, it was found out that the rate is dependent on two rate law, okay, two term in the rate law. One is independent of the Y and another one is dependent on Y. So basically in a very simple word, this is, a uh, second order kinetics, the second term, and the first term is a first order kinetics. So what we have found out is the rate law suggests that the reaction is occurring by two pa mechanism pathway. So in which one is dependent on the concentration of Y and in another one, it is not dependent on concentration of Y. So from here, it looks like one is SN2 and another one is SN1 mechanism. So let us try to understand this particular mechanism. So let us take path one. Okay, and in path one, if you see the Y is replacing the X, so it basically attacks the empty PZ orbital, which I'll try to show you later uh, in detail. So try to understand it coordinates with uh, platinum complex. And if it coordinates with the platinum complex, it forms a five coordinated species. And in a fast step, the X is replaced, okay, or displaces the X and gives you the desired square planar complex. So over here, if you see in the slow step, both the species are involved, that is the ligand, okay, the incoming ligand and the complex. So the rate is dependent on two concentration term, that is the complex and the ligand. So as a result, it becomes a second order kinetics. For the same reaction, okay, if it takes place in water, again, the approach is same. Now, since water is a potential ligand, so water approaches the metal, Okay, that is the platinum, and it forms a five coordinated species. Once it forms a five coordinated species, what will happen is the X is getting replaced. Once the X get replaced, it will again give you a four coordinated species, but this time it will be water, which will be replacing the X. Then this water will be replaced by our ligand in a very fast step, 
to give you again a five coordinated intermediate in which the water get displaced to give you the desired product. Over here, if you see the fast step, what you can see is Y minus is involved in the fast step. As a result, it will not be a rate determining step. Okay, but if you see your slow step, water is involved in your slow step and your complex. As a result of which, this two will decide the rate, the concentration of water and the our reacting complex. So if you see that, so rate will be cons rate constant into concentration of water and concentration of platinum complex. Now, what do we know is water is acting as a solvent over here. So if water is acting as a solvent, it will be present in large excess. So for practically, if you talk about it remains constant only, the concentration of water will not change. As a result of which, what will happen is this particular value, this concentration will remain constant. So if it remains constant, how we can write the rate law is rate is equal to constant. So this into this practically constant and what will decide or what will vary is nothing but the concentration of platinum complex. So platinum complex will be the one who will be deciding the rate. But remember that it looks like of this particular reaction, or if you see this particular rate law, what you can see is this is a second order kinetic, uh, first order kinetics. So this is nothing but a first order kinetics, but it was a second order kinetics because of some condition over here, obviously water is present in excess. That is the reason why it turned into a first order kinetics. Such type of reaction is known as a pseudo first order reaction. So remember that the mechanism through which the reaction takes place is SN2. Okay, but when you calculate the rate law, it was found out to be a first order kinetics because of the presence of the solvent in excess. So the reaction mechanism in which, or the reaction mechanism, if you see of both the path, they are SN2 mechanism only. So that is how we can say that the square planar complexes undergoes reaction or displacement reaction or ligand substitution reaction through SN2 pathway, not SN1 pathway, but if the solvent is involved, it undergoes uh, SN2 pathway, but if you find out the rate law, it we find it as a first order kinetics since it undergoes a pseudo first order reaction, okay? So that is what we can conclude that path two is the solvent path, we have seen that, and it is a Y minus independent path, the Y minus is not involved, and path one is the direct path. In the solvent part, the solvent H2O replaces the X minus, that is our outgoing ligand in a slow step and subsequently replace Y minus in a rapid step. That's why Y minus does not involve in, uh, cal or in, uh, in the calculation of the rate, okay? Or in the rate law, we cannot see the uh, concentration term of Y minus. In a similar way, the solvent path is not a SN1 process, that's what I have told you, but a SN2 process only, but probably it will be actually a second order kinetics, but because of the presence of uh, solvent, the it goes for a pseudo first order kinetics instead of a proper second order kinetics. So to conclude it, hence the SN2 mechanism of the substitution reaction of a square planar complex, how we can illustrate it is in this way. So in which we take a square planar complex, so I'm taking two similar ligand and one this similar ligand, which is trans to X. So I just want to show you that X is trans to B, okay? So it is a trans actually with respect to B, okay? So then the Y minus or the incoming ligand will approach towards the square uh, planar complex through this empty P orbital from above or below the plane. It donates its electron to this empty PZ orbital as a result of which it forms a square pyramidal intermediate. There is a mistake over here. It's not planar, it's square pyramidal intermediate. So you can see clearly it's a square pyramidal intermediate. So once this square pyramidal intermediate is formed, then the leaving group X, which you can see in the screen, then adjust so as to generate a trigonal bipyramid, okay? With Y, X, and the trans B ligand, which you can see, forming an equatorial plane and the other two ligand forming actually or occupying the axial position. Then this trigonal bipyramid then rearranges to a square pyramid, which you can again see where the leaving X group occupies the axial site. And this 
leaving group then finally departs to give you the square planar complex okay the movement of the ligand and the movement of the uh, or the change in the angle is shown in the figure okay that is how the ligand substitution reaction in square planar complexes takes place okay if you try to see this type of reaction okay what you can find out is in this reaction the x is trans to b okay and if you see properly y is also trans to b so that means this kind of reactions are stereo specific please try to understand when we say stereo specific a cis complex will always give you a cis product and a trans complex will always give you a trans product such type of reaction are known as a stereo specific reaction so this is one of the example of stereo specific reaction so that is how we understand the uh, mechanism of a square planar complexes which is nothing but a sn2 mechanism so thank you everyone do subscribe for this channel for explanation on various topics in chemistry